Hi, I'm Sarah Cowgill, along with Andrew Moran, Dave Patterson, John Clark, and Scott Cosenza. And this is the Conservative Five, Liberty Nation's online TV news program. Remember that commercial in the 70s where a businessman stuck waiting on a train spied a McDonald's? That happy guy got a burger, fries, a Coke, and change back from a dollar. Up until Joe Biden became the president, fast food places all had dollar menus. Today, it's well over mm, probably 12 bucks to eat at those once affordable places for the struggling family. From 2019 to 2023, the limited service meals, that's Andrew Moran's words, not mine, and snacks category has climbed nearly 28%, which means fast food is now higher priced than a regular sit down restaurant with a server, minus the tip. When it comes to fast and thrifty, it seems people should hit the pricey places. I would, but Andrew, am I oversimplifying this at no, all? No, you're not- no, you're absolutely you're absolutely correct. Sit down full service restaurants are now cheaper than fast food places. You know, I, there was an ad um a, a, probably a decade ago. I forgot uh, Cedric the Entertainer, and he was he was uh, promoting a Whopper for a dollar. There's no way you could ever envision that in today's market. You look at, you look at the numbers over the years. You now you see a Big Mac, for example. A Big Mac has risen about twenty percent since 2019. Be- between 2014 and 2024, Popeye's prices have hiked 60, 86%. Jimmy John, 62%. Subway, 39%. Now, of course, viewers might be wondering, why is this happening? Is it just Bidenomics? Well, you, you have, a, you have a, 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 a plethora of issues here. You have higher labor costs. You know, those minimum wage hikes, you know, let's say California, for example, have weighed on a lot of these franchises. Uh, you have greater input price pressures. Think, you know, paper wrappers, for example. That has gone up in price. You have food ingredients costing more. So you have, you, you, and you have now companies warning. You have, you know, let's say McDonald's and Starbucks as an example. They're warning that their customers are not patronizing these restaurants as much anymore, particularly on the low income scale. When this was, this was the fast food industry's key target: low income uh, 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 patrons who want to take their family to spend twenty dollars on on a Big Mac and Happy Meals. And that's just not happening anymore. And now you have other two things happening in the fast food industry. You have one, uh, they're they're auto the services or two mm-hmm. and you can look at this on a uh, liberty nation's x account or a twitter account you're seeing companies hiring foreign workers through digital screens to help of uh, customers so this is absolutely uh, a transformation of the fast food sector in today's inflationary environment wait a second andrew you mean if i go to my uh, uh my local mcdonald's i might get like a person in malaysia or something it's my customer sir like he's like shepherding me through the ordering process yeah so it's well it's, it's not mcdonald's right now but it's going to eventually go to that that's going to be help complement their automotive system well you know hey hey maybe, maybe you know, <laughs> when you're when you when you can pay these people three dollars an hour as opposed to paying them twenty dollars an hour you know why wouldn't that make, why wouldn't they make that investment yeah. i just want to know if my quarter pound of a cheese is still going to be a quarter pound of beef the is, are they cutting cheese. corners on that that it would be false real. advertising if the pre-cooked weight didn't measure up to a quarter pound and you'd have prosecutions and federal trade commission and everything else so they're kind of locked in it. with that one because they because they they locked into that name it's funny it's probably the one sandwich that you actually can guarantee i bet you the other ones uh have have suffered from shrinkflation uh oh, but, but well, probably sure not the have. quarter pounder you know what yeah, they call a quarter the pounder with cheese in Paris? Yeah. You know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? And what do they call it? They call it a Royale with cheese. Yes, Royale. Royale with, Royale. Cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. By the I way, it was two dollars. They used to go on special in the early two thousands. You could buy two Big Macs for two dollars. Yeah, so that's that's where we were. But of course, back then the dollar was worth some money, and as opposed to now, and when. when so not. you know, um, is is there a is there a farm factor contributing to unaffordable junk food? Our our farmer on I I don't do animal farm I do <laughs> dirt farming. Um, so Clark, fill us in. Well, food is something that Americans are they they care about, and it's uh, very much part of the inflationary structure and. 
it's a little more complex than that. And for instance, you could still have your pre-cooked weight of a quarter pounder and increase the amount of water or pink slime, which is no longer called that, but it's still there, or or fat content. So you could end up maybe, Scott, bypassing that lawsuit. But a lot of the factors here are, are, are not going to change. And, and they're actually a demonstration, it seems to me, of how efforts to create equity, create new inequities, particularly looking at California, um, which I'll come back to in a second. Red Lobster just announced closure, I think, of 48 mm -hmm. restaurants. They were formed in the 60s as a, a poor man's seafood fair. Uh, it is hurting those those poor voters that the socialist wokesters say that they're working for. Uh, every time they raise wages artificially, they end up hurting those people in California where they instituted a, a $20 minimum wage for the fast food industry only and exempting, therefore, the higher end restaurants that can hire people at 15 or 16 bucks an hour while they serve $70 steak dinners. And also exempting uh, Gavin Newsom's Panera Bread donor. If you bake bread in the store and sell whole loaves of bread, you're exempt. These are examples of pr profound inequities in the name of equity that have caused the layoff already of 9,500 workers in California alone. They're not making very good wage there. And many uh, fast food restaurants announcing they're gonna move to robotics. Their margins are already very slim. By the way, fast food is um, shown to have higher levels of phthalates and forever chemicals and other things. So maybe it's a, maybe ultimately that's their goal is to benefit the poorest Americans by depriving them the ability to buy food that's not good for them anyway. Maybe I, I made that joke hand. in my article about this. I said, hey, you know, at least the bright side of this is that people are going to be healthier by not consuming all this uh, junk at McDonald's. and. Uh, yeah, well, and I mean, we're let's face it. I don't think anything is going to go back to pre-pandemic prices. But even looking, about, looking back on how things have just, for the last maybe 15 years, it's just increasing little by little. Things get smaller, prices get bigger. And I know Americans prefer to put to pay the same amount but that's not happening anymore um like um dave you know andrew says when an inflation bomb goes off it's it, it it's that way forever it doesn't go back so i don't know do you eat a big mac combo for 20 bucks or do you go home well that's exactly right i mean uh recently the congressional budget office uh issued a report on the effect of inflation uh, on the economy and for the last four years of the Biden administration, the cumulative impact of inflation on goods and services has been nearly 19 percent. And, you know, the number I find disturbing in, in all of this uh, comes from that same report. And for families to maintain the standard of living that they had when Trump left office, they have to spend seventeen thousand dollars per year. You know, those figures uh, are for consumer goods, mostly but I think that we also have to take a look at the big ticket items like weapon systems and the equipment and costing billions of dollars. 20% uh, of a billion dollars is a lot more than 20% of five dollars. Let's I think we can agree on that. But you, every contract has a clause allowing for a cost escalation. Uh, and that's to the government. Read taxpayer uh, that, you know, it pays in the as the rise of uh, of inflation it's an automatic cost additive the cost through development and manufacturing phases you know it doesn't make any difference uh in the acquisition program whether it takes one year or five years to field a weapon system that cost is going to be added it's non-value added cost i might add and it, it doesn't you know it doesn't make the airplanes go faster it doesn't make airplanes able to carry more ordnance or more stealthy it doesn't add ordnance to ships or make them go faster it's just simply cost more over time and there's no value added well that the brings inflation me to of the another currency. question well let me just say this the inflation of the currency is a massive tax increase and it's an elective choice just for people who don't maybe realize that it is a choice to inflate the the value of the dollar and it's a massive declination of value for anybody who happens to hold dollars or make their money in dollars no that's exactly right because fuel prices impact food prices our producer price index is up wholesale prices are up in new reports and so the people are going to feel the pain and and uh uh, takeout food has been rising at a faster pace than home purchased groceries uh, all throughout these last four years. If Andrew is right, 
then it doesn't matter who's president in 2025. This is going to stay this way. And that's a well, little bit spooky. It matters well, yeah, for 2028. Well, in other words, you're right, Sarah. The prices are going to go up. I've spoken with John Clark about this. He is a, a cattle uh, farmer or beef rancher or whatever uh, the right word is. He owns cows. And uh, uh, <laughs> we've talked about the price of uh, of beef. And a lot of the increase in the price of beef is yet to arrive because what's happened is the cost to maintain a, a cow while it's growing before it's slaughtered has risen so much that a lot of these people have sent their cows to slaughter early. Uh, and so that's actually suppressed the price of beef by increasing supply. But in a year, that's not going to happen. So you're going to have a double dip, which is the money's going to be worth less. And you're going to have a massive uh, reduction in the supply of beef for, for slaughter. I share a white hot passion with uh, LibertyNation.com's co-founder, Tim Donner, for dollar stores that sell items that are more than a dollar. But that's the past. What does a dollar store do now? Uh, you can't have a dollar store because the items that you can produce and sell for profit for one dollar or less become so diminished that, you know, why even bother? The thing that that it bothered me a little bit is the inevitability of, of uh, based on the cost of beef and the lagging indicator of, of beef, beef costs. But there, there's another aspect to this. If you can get the cost of fuel down by becoming energy inter independent, everything mm -hmm. that accrues from that will be will, will not rise in cost as much. Everything is gonna go up something. But it seems to me that that the the, the crux of all of this is when you allow the cost of oil and energy to rise, it's going to impact everything. Some things will be uh, cost more later on. Some things will cost more right away. And it's those things that cost more right away that impact the people, uh, Americans, most severely and that they see and they should vote accordingly. To tie to Sarah's point, though, about uh, the next election and perhaps 2020, and it doesn't matter who wins, you look back in the 70s, you know, the, with the guns and butter in the 60s did not show up until the 1970s under Arthur Burns or Richard Nixon, and then uh, then Arthur Burns, Gerald Ford, Arthur Burns, Jimmy Carter. And then you had about 20, a good solid 20 years of a high inflation environment. It wasn't until around the mid 1990s, uh, early, early to mid 1990s, that inflation finally settled down. So to think that somehow inflation is now going to come down next Next year and then remain back to that Fed's two percent target. It's naive to think that you know the the trajectory of inflation right now is mirroring the exact pattern of what happened in the 1970s and 1980s. So you know could inflation reach back up to that uh, nine percent mark? That way to see. Of course, CPI the way it's measured is very different compared to what it was back then. But these inflationary pressures are going to persist, and it doesn't matter who wins uh, November. It's gonna. Uh, hurt Americans. So basically what you're saying is we either go further down this path and suffer or we don't go anywhere and we just tread water. Is that well, what of course, saying? I mean, well, Donald Trump, just use him use him as an example. He never talks about the national debt. He doesn't talk about slashing spending. He doesn't talk about balancing the budget. And, and of course, neither does Joe Biden. RFK, I don't think he even, I mean, yeah, he's not, he, he addressed the national debt, but he doesn't talk about, you know, aggressively slashing spending. You talk to somebody in Washington, let's say a Lindsey Graham, saying maybe we should balance the budget, they'll go apoplectic. And that ties <laughs> into our previous conversation because you need this deficit spending to f sustain the war machine, to sustain Sustain the to sustain all this big government spending, and of course, the elephant in the room is that seventy two percent of mandatory spending goes. To, uh, seventy two percent of spending in the Congress in Washington is dedicated to mandatory spending, Social Security, Medicare, and now guess what? Interest payments. So this thing is not going to die down because government largess uh, persists. But I think that you you if you if you start to to push that narrative, and and Andrew, you're not wrong. But if you push that, then you come to a point where you say, well, there's nothing I can do. And so I guess we're just going to have to live with this. Well, that's not true. I mean, uh, there, the idea of tax cuts that generate more revenue, more revenue adds more tax revenue to the federal government, which one would hope. 
uh, would address the, uh, the the national the annual debt, and and so you you do have to have some uh, bright light at the end of the tunnel and hope it's not a train. I find that narrative that Trump's tax cuts uh, uh, contributed to the to the growing deficit and deficits comical because you look at the numbers that Liberty Nation has reported on it. When those tax cuts went into effect, guess what? Federal revenues went up. The U.S. does not have a revenue problem. It has a spending problem. When you're spending seven trillion dollars plus, but you're still taking a good amount, five six trillion dollars, that's astounding. That, 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 that you, sh you should be apoplectic by that just because government is just. It shows how government spending is getting out of control and it's not slowing down based on the white house's own numbers yeah look, look, there you go look what happens andrew when when congress actually does do that they do it in such a ham-fisted way that you get things like the budget control act and which was devastating for programs and and it ended up costing more for defense programs because you had that cap on all right guys well i think okay. we've beat this horse enough <laughs> i think i'm gonna give it a break uh, and I think maybe I need to do a little more home cooking and skip the fried deliciousness that those fast food kings and queens keep pushing, especially if Andrew claims we're stuck with these outrageous prices. So thanks for watching and all of you guys go make a nice fresh garden salad. That's it for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble, we're on them all. As well, Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all of our TV productions. I'm your host, Sarah Cowgill. Thanks for joining us today for free thinking, free speech, libertynation.com.